So in this video, let's talk about a whole new way that we can make a solid. And maybe we'll do so by generating something like this honey dipper. And if you're watching closely, you may see two different ways that you can make the same part. So let's get into it now. So in the part design environment, I'm going to select the XY plane and create a 2D sketch. I'm going to select my arc. And of course, I'll make my center right above the origin and draw an arc just like that. Now I'll grab a vertical and make sure that the arc center is vertical with the origin. And I'll also make a horizontal constraint from the arc center to this end point here. Now the only thing that isn't constrained is gonna be the radius of the arc. So I'll grab a dimension and go with 0.35 as a radius. With that being done, I can make a vertical line and on my vertical line, I can give this a distance of six inches. So we continue to be fully constrained, but there's more than one way to draw an arc. I've been drawing an arc from the center point, but you can also make a tangent arc, and this will be particularly useful here. I can select the end of my line, and now, however I make my arc, it will be tangent to the line that I've made. Likewise, I can draw another one and it will be tangent to the arc that I've just drawn. So from here, I can give this a dimension vertically from endpoint to endpoint of 1.25. And the arc has gotten quite short, so let's lengthen that out just a bit. From here, I'll go get a, a horizontal constraint and I'll make the arc center and its endpoint horizontal. And we are yet again changing in arc sizes. So this time I'll make this be equal, right? I select an equal constraint, click both arcs. Now they'll be the same no matter what. And finally, how do I want to locate this point? I'll grab a dimension here to the origin. We'll make this 1.5. I'll come up with another vertical line another tangent arc here. And I'll make sure that I have a vertical constraint from this arc end to its center, and also from the center of this arc down to the origin. And now the only question is, what should my overall height be? Well, I'll grab a dimension and click the very bottom and very top point and give this an overall length of how about 10.5. From here, I need to make a line from this endpoint to this endpoint, and I have a closed figure of what, what would look like half of a honey tipper. So let's deactivate the sketch. We will revolve, right? We choose revolve right here. And now we can select our center axis, and we are revolving that half all the way around to make a whole honey dipper. But of course, honey dippers have those grooved type of features in there. So what can we do for that? I'll highlight my Y, X plane. So in this sketch, I will grab a circle and I'll make sure that the diameter of the circle is about 0.575 or so. I'll give this off of the origin a horizontal distance of 1.5. And we'll give this a vertical distance of 9.5. From here, I can deactivate my sketch. I can use a revolve cut, right? Initially, we used a revolve to add material. Now let's use a revolve to remove the material. And I'll select my axis to revolve around. And there it is. Uh, I can finally also pattern this. So if I can choose a linear pattern, and what feature do I want to pattern? I'd like to pattern my cut. I'd like to move the linear path of this pattern right in the direction of this axis. And I'll make it 0.75. And this time I'll change the direction so that it's moving down and add one more. And there we should have a pretty reasonable honey dipper. So if we were watching, we made all of these grooves separately, but when we did our initial revolve, 
It's also possible to just sketch in all of the grooves and make this whole thing as one single revolve. So maybe give that a try as a separate exercise and I'll see you in the next video.